Hello friends, myself Kulaipa, and I'm here today to discuss about the Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse. And uh, yep, so today overview is we will understand what is Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse features that it provides, like especially scale up and scale down uh, uh, resources. And uh, we will also look at the ecosystem. And we will compare a few competitors uh, that are also, we will discuss about uh, key features. So Snowflake is a SQL data warehouse and it is built for cloud and delivered as a software as a service, which means as you store the data and process the data, you may require to pay for that. And the unique architecture we will discuss now. In traditional architecture, we will have a shared disk and shared nothing architecture. So basically, in shared disk architecture, you will have a centralized data repo and compute instances will have access to it. Whereas shared nothing, each compute instance, they will store the portion of data and then they process it. Whereas in Snowflake, it is a hybrid of shared disk and shared nothing architecture, which means, so they will have a, data repository where all compute instances will have access to it at the same time compute instances may store the data on locally just to process it so we will have a decoupled between data storage and compute instances that is the unique architecture of snowflake and i just want to take you through the architecture of uh, snowflake so it will have a uh, three layers on top of it cloud service layer and this is query processing layer and the bottom you will have a data storage layer. here you will store your data exactly on amazon s3 and i just want to explain in terms of you know query execution how it will work so for the first time when user submits the query so through jdbc or odbc or any of ui use interfaces first snowflake will go and search for cache results in the cloud layer, which means this particular Snowflake will maintain cache results for 24 hours and as well as metadata details also. And if it is finding any of a cache results, then it will return to the user. If results are not there, then what will happen? So the query will be submitted to warehouses. So warehouses, nothing but compute instances, like it will have a CPU, memory, and space to process the data. And these compute warehouses will process your queries and get that data from S3. So that's how result will be returned to the user. So this is what a landscape that Snowflake offers. You can build your own enterprise data warehouses or data lakes by getting the data from various data sources like OLAP databases and any other applications and even data providers like APIs. And you can also get the data from IoT. And you can prepare your own data mass and then you can analytical tools. So this is what I wanted to highlight. So it has unlimited scalability, not only in terms of compute instances, even as the data insertion increases, when your data grows like anything, see the storage automatically scale up. At the same time, it will not only support vertical scaling it will also support horizontal scaling so what does it mean so vertical scaling supports adding up cpu and memory to your compute instances whereas horizontal scaling you can add your machines to the compute process so this is unlimited here and there there will be no any manual intervention for this snowflake automatically manages all this and I just want to give you an introduction to the ecosystem where the Snowflake utilized by popular tools. If you look at data integration, yes, ETL tools like Talent, Informatica, and Metillion, so they have a connectivity. You may require to just get the JDBC or ODBC drivers. Look at business intelligence tools, yes, Tableau and Power BI has an access to your Snowflake database. Once you process the data and keep it ready, and you can downstream tools and also data scientists they can access the data using spark or our language also alteryx so apart from this i just want to highlight this you can also build your own applications using 
Python, Java, .NET, and even Node.js as well. So this is all about data ecosystem. And here I just want to compare with few competitors. Uh, with respect to on-premises EDW, which means enterprise data warehouses like Teradata, Vertica, and Netiza, Look at the similarities. They both have MVP architecture and native SQL, but where it differs. So instant scalability, which means if you want to increase the space or size of uh, uh, your compute instance, or else even CPU or memory, so you can instantly, you can increase. And also separation of compute and storage, yes, we have a separate area and decoupled. So there is no uh, linkage between the storage and compute process. That's how Snowflake differs from on-premises EDW. And if you look at cloud enterprise data warehouses like Redshift, Azure SQL, yes, the similarities between these two, they won't have any physical hardware, and yes, they support native SQL. But only thing is, yes, concurrency. Concurrency means like you will have a multi-cluster and uninterruptedly you can serve the data to the users. And also the advantage here is automatic failover and disaster recovery. So when, a infrastructure failed so no need to worry about this because snowflake will maintain three times replica of your original data so that automatically they can recover your data and also if any of a developer is dropping a table just imagine by mistake he dropped a table you can still collect the data back by using time travel so that's how snowflake will provide the features and when you compare with hadoop yes like cloudera and hortonworks yes they support parallelism and support for semi-structured data as well. But whereas in Snowflake, you really not required to manage any of the files. But in Hadoop environment, yes, you will have a HDFS and you need to thoroughly monitor those files. And yes, native SQL support for semi-structured data. That is very important. So Snowflake actually offers a data type called variant. So you just require to load the data into that particular column and you can also query that particular semi-structured data it's so simple so it has connectivity for semi-structured database so here snowflake editions if you look at standard premier enterprise and enterprise for sensitive data based on the versions a key features will change and uh, the important thing is when you are creating your account so you, snowflake will host your account either on AWS or Azure or GCP, Google Cloud Platform. So if you wanted to choose a Snowflake VPS itself, which means a virtual private network, which will be maintained by Snowflake itself, we can also choose that. So your account will be maintained by Snowflake. And here, yes, uh, you can provide, I mean, you can maintain multi-cluster uh, warehouse to provide services to ETL team, reporting team, data scientists, and if you have any continuous data integration like Snowpipe, so you can provide each team a separate warehouse, you know, and current access to everyone. And instant elasticity, that's what I told you. Elasticity in the sense you can maintain multi-cluster, which means, say for example, you wanted to generate reports at the end of the month or else beginning of month, and you expected that uh, load will be heavy. So you can just, manage multi-cluster so that you're you're going to provide compute and compute instance to your team separately dedicated compute instances just wait new tricks also available so you can clone your database schema and even table so you just clone it and snowflake will not charge for that until unless you made changes to the cloned one so that's the best feature that available in snowflake yes there is another feature that we have a sharing. So you can securely share the data to other Snowflake users, which means non-Snowflake users, and as well as internal Snowflake users. So Snowflake comes with the concept called share. Yep, so Snowflake will support complete SQL database commands. So like all the DDLs, insertions, updates, merge, everything will be supported. Along with this, you have an option to write your own user-defined function, not only using SQL, you have an option also to compose your functions using JavaScript. Have a concept of session variables, which will be available to that particular session. Also, you have parameters concepts also. So you can compose even store procedures, functions, and you can call them. 
And the next point I wanted to cover is data protection. So which means no need to take backup of your data regularly and even entirely. So how it works. So even your infrastructure fail, fails. So since they keep three times of your data across multiple data centers, so they can recover your data automatically. And even time travel option is there. Say for example, you have loaded the data into a table and you have updated also. And now you just wanted to get the original data back. So which is happened at particular time. So you can just provide timestamp and you can retrieve the original data. So that's how it provides the time travel features and long-term data protection. If you go for standard or enterprise edition, so they will have a zero copy clones and also they have an optional export to S3 and they will maintain 90 days data retention period. So that's how Snowflake comes with unique feature. Snowpipe, yes, this is another advantage that uh, Snowflake provides, continuous data loading, which means uh, you can create external stages on any uh, S3 or I mean, uh, Azure or else Google Cloud Platform. As files arrives as soon as possible, so this particular feature will get the notification and automatically loads the data to Snowflake. So no need to have uh, any manual intervention. You just create the process, so automatically you can load the data. So apart from that, I wanted to list out what are the features that we have. So first thing is Snowflake architecture. Yes, I told it is a hybrid of shared nothing and shared disk architecture, which, which makes a unique architecture to improve the performance. I mean, when you're processing the data, when you're running your queries, this particular architecture makes more efficient in order to retrieve the data. And next thing is table structure. Yes, when you are loading the data, in Snowflake, the table will be organized into micro partitions, which means of size, compressed size of 15 MB, but actual size may be 50 to uh, uh, 500 MB. So this will let users to have a faster access rather than you know scanning entire partitions. Uh, Snowflake itself prune the and filter all the columns and partitions, and they will get the, all the details which partitions can be scanned and then can give the results. So that feature is also available and clustering. Yes, after, I mean, on top of partitioning, you can also apply clustering. So clustering key means you can identify a few columns where you can sort the data and rearrange into micro partitions. With this feature, say for example, if you are using a particular column frequently in where class or in join class, you can use this feature in order to improve the performance. And this particular clustering will be used when you have a huge amount of data, like in terabytes of data and cache results yes i told you when you are running a query yes snowflake charges for each query execution also but in case snowflake it will store results for 24 hours and when you are triggering same query again and again so it will not cost anything for you it will just get the results from cache and connectivity yes i told you uh, during the ecosystem introduction so it will have a connectivity to all all of the etl tools like informatica talent and pentaho and even uh, abinitio and when it comes to the reporting tools the major reporting tools like uh, tableau and power bi they have a connectivity so you can visualize your data of course even data scientists also they can write their own programs in r or python and even uh, node.js and other languages also you can write uh, queries so Snowflake has connectivity to all these tools and things. As I mentioned, auto scale up and scale down feature. For example, you are loading your data and you have a heavy load during month end or during the beginning of your month. So what will happen? You really not required to you know, uh, manually do anything. It will automatically scales up all the compute resources. And as soon as the load decreases, all the compute resources will be shut down, which means they will be suspended. And the time travel and fail safe, yes, as I mentioned earlier, so you can also go back to some time period and then you can get the data at that particular point of time, even though you made so many DML operations like updates or insertions or else you have truncated the data or deleted the data, still you can recover. And fail safe is something that, yes, if you drop a table, even database itself, you can drop the database and you have an option to recover the database or table and zero copy cloning yes i told you you can just copy a table as it is and that particular uh, clone table will really not occupy any space which means snowflake will not charge for anything until unless you make any changes to the 
cloned one. And yes, I introduced about continuous data loading. If you want to make it automatically load into Snowflake table from any of the external sources like S3 or Azure or else GCP, you can design this Snowpipe. And secure data sharing, yes, to the end users or else to non-Snowflake users also. If you want to provide some select access only to your data, you can provide it that is more secured. And yes, file types, uh, JSON files and packet files and even other file types also supported by Snowflake. And you can instantly write your own query without even loading to a table, you can directly query file types itself and staging the data. Yes, there is an option. You can just stage your files to Snowflake and without even loading into the table, you can start querying to them. And you can create also external stages where the data files will be resides on S3 Azure GCP. So that's what external stages and we have internal stages also where Snowflake has its own stage area and resource monitoring. So particularly this section, if you want to create any alerts based on your consumption of credits, and you wanted to set some alarm, just want to inform you that yes, credits are consumed uh, some 70% or 80% or 90%. And I need to receive alarm so that, you know, I can go and uh, increase my credits. So that's how you can set the monitor as well. And yes, system defined roles and uh, custom roles, you can define your own roles and uh, it will come by default with four roles, uh, account administration and sysadmin and public and other one. So yes, you can also create your custom roles. Yeah, what customers are like more about Snowflake? So of uh, company CEOs, they have given their own opinion where they used to run uh, reports for two, three days after introdu introducing the Snowflake, they ran in just 45 minutes. You can just assume that how faster it is and how simplicity just to improve the concurrency. And here I just wanted to, as part of this demo, I wanted to demonstrate uh, time travel and fail safe especially and uh, yeah, query profiling also, but uh, mostly I will go with the time travel and fail safe. So for this, I'm going back to a demonstration section. So here is my account, Snowflake account basically, and I'm going to resume my warehouse. So this is the syntax to uh, resume your warehouse. When you click this button, you see here there is a green dot available which means your warehouse is started and i have a database already and i have a table also i'm going to just drop it and then i'll create it again i'm going to create this table And I'm going to insert the data with the values, ID, name, and location. Let me select the data first. Yes, I have a Bangalore as a location. And I'm going to set the timestamp location, June UTC. And I'm going to select the timestamp from here. You look at the timestamp, I've got it. Copy this and then keep it ready for my next analysis yeah i'm going to update a value where id is 121110 to mumbai which means i am going to change the value of location from bangalore to mumbai so let's execute this now let's query this particular table let's query this particular table now you will have a value bangalore no no mumbai i just updated mumbai but at this particular point of time i mean before to this time I had Bangalore. So to retrieve this value, I'm, I'm not sure what was the value for this. And I'm going to substitute this in the below query. So I'm querying the main table itself, select star from job seeker, but I've used timestamp. So at particular, this timestamp, let's run this. You see, I got the Bangalore, but recently I have updated. So that is the time travel. So though you made changes to your data, you still can access the data using and fail safe, I told you, right? Let me drop the job seeker table. I dropped it and I will try to select the data. It says table doesn't exist and I've done it by mistake, not intentionally. So now you can use just undrop table table name. Your table is ready. So you can just go and 
execute this query, yeah, you have. That's how time travel and uh, failover will work in Snowflake. These are all the cool features and keep subscribed to the uh, course. I will be posting more videos. Thanks. Thank you so much.